Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 14, Chapter 4, The Purge of the Red Lotus, Part 6. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the Tensura Light Novel. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. After sending Gabble and the others away by diversion, we were transported with Laplace to the Imperial capital. Here we go. This is our secret home base. Hey, where is this? Despite shifting over with magic, Laplace didn't look right. At this point, there was an extremely nasty feeling of foreboding. Looking around, it was a spacious hall that I don't have in the country. It seems to be thought that which emperor's courtesy hall, but there is a distorted sense of space that does not wear off. Hello. No, it's not. Usually they only teleport to fixed locations, so this is the first time this has happened. Laplace replied anxiously, while I squinted at him. Doesn't look like a lie, but here's what's going on. Looking around while contemplating, there was a place a few steps higher in front of 50 meters. There's a chair that looks like a jade seat above, giving the impression of an audience hall. There was a large, impressive-looking figure sitting in a chair, and next to it stood a pale blue-haired beauty with prominent features in a bun on her head, and it could not be mistaken for Velgrind. Velgrind. No, I was in the battlefield a while ago, I don't think it's here. It would be time to move, but it doesn't look like it. Surrounded? Looks like a trap. I sensed it too, and there were dozens of people in this hall. And, quite a strong one at that. Laplace. Is the goal really to set us up? How could this happen? Is that interference with our technique? It's a lie. No way. As the saying goes, confused as hell. This also seems to be an unanticipated state of affairs for Laplace. In my opinion, this is not a trap set by Laplace. Yeah, well done, Laplace. I'm also very happy that I was able to fool the demon Lord Rimuru and his party. B boss. Wait, wait, wait. What's going on? Ah ha ha ha, no more acting. We'll win if we finish off the demon Lord Rimuru here. Listening to Yuki's speech, the killing aura of the Sheen and Sue rose. But, unexpectedly, Benamaru and Diablo calmly listened to Yuki and Laplace's conversation. You believe in Laplace, too? Ah, no. I want to kill them when the two of them get careless, hey. Kufufufufu, you're really worthy of your title Benamaru. Do it before you expose the killing aura. That's the fundamentals. This will, Yuki and Laplace's arguments go into white hot water. Laplace is desperately trying to prove his innocence to us. Trust us. This time it's true, we didn't do anything bad. Calm down. That guy can be called Yuki, but he's not Yuki either. Hey? I'm sorry, but I guess Kondo was in control. Ah, that's what's going on. It's not a good idea to cheat someone else, but it's a good idea to get cheated yourself. However, the situation has not improved either. We are still surrounded and in crisis. I didn't think it would be so easy to find out. I want to make you more suspicious and kill each other. Your Majesty, I regret my defeat in battle. Boring show, but forget it. Before the battle began, I also wanted to say something. After Yuki had finished reporting to the figure sitting on the stage, he stood up and started walking around. Velgrind followed him like a virtuous wife of Rudra. Other than the fact that she was a beauty and appeared to be just an ordinary person, it was clear that this was hidden information. Velgrind opened a thin layer of barriers and surrounded itself and the man walking ahead. By the action of the barrier boundary, all aura is cut off. An amazing sense of power. I don't think the Velgrind in front of me is fake. I agree. It's amazing to have reached this level. Yeah? As it is often pulled by Lord Veldora to train, the feeling is the same in my opinion. Of course, you can't win. It's really a great frontier. But as Sheehan said, there isn't much of a difference compared to Lord Veldora. Diablo actually doesn't lie or say things he can't do himself. According to my own understanding, that's about it. I don't suppose it was in your plans. It'd be fun not to come to a summit. Lately, my hair seems. Are you going bald? Yes, yes, there's been a lot of stress lately. Well, how can that be? My hair's faded a bit. It was black, but now it seems to be teal? Hoo ha. Huh. Could it be melanin loss or something? Maybe? That's what I think. Rudra stepped forward to heal. Indeed, not in my plans. However, I do have something to say. That would be great. Anyway, sit down first. Rudra waved his hand as he finished, and two chairs appeared in front of us. Magic? I don't understand the principle at all, but I don't think I'm going to get some kind of trap or anything. 
this is the kind of time to focus on atmosphere, and I sat down nonchalantly. Well, sit down for yourself. You've got no manners. Come on, Velgrind, they didn't do anything wrong. Since this person was also in the position of a demon lord, it was the same position as the one who ruled the country. I believe in the existence of reciprocity. If you think it's okay, then I'm fine with it. Rudra was seated squarely in the chair opposite. Velgrind naturally waited on his right. A step behind, standing side by side, were four knights armed with mythical rank. It seems that these four people, are the four horsemen that Bonnie was talking about. Finally, the man in the clear monochrome black uniform stood to Rudra's left. He doesn't look Japanese, this man should be Damrata. Yuki, on the other hand, stood witty next to Damrata, very clear about his position. Then, simply, treat Yuki as an enemy. That said, all of the high-ranking people of the empire were present except Kondo. Although our side also brought in senior subordinates, it was still overwhelmingly disadvantageous in terms of numbers. On the imperial side, the order of the imperial emperor's near guard has dozens of sequential superiors, and the top, single digit, has five in it. Add to that Velgrind, honestly I'm doubting it can be one. By the way, Yuki is also in. In order not to let the other person read my mind, I put on a fearless attitude and said. You're the one who's been killed this time, aren't you? While considering that our actions might be guessed at, I didn't expect it to turn out that way. Ha ha ha, no need to be humble, it's unexpected for me too. I already knew that the Mecha legions sent out would be defeated, but I didn't expect that not only were there zero survivors, but even the awakened ones weren't born, which is really beyond my calculations. So, who's making this plan? But unexpectedly, Rudra was happy to tell us himself. According to him, it was Lieutenant Kondo who made the plan. I was going to say this was expected, but the plan was even worse than I thought it would be. Awareness of the number of the attacking army. Afterwards, the army feigned defeat. Facing the pursuing army, meet it with hybrid legions. However, this legion has the potential for betrayal and can be treated as a hostile force. Exclude all together when betrayal is clear. The task was entrusted to the marshal. As a result, in the second phase, the plan went awry. As a result, Kondo seems to have drastically changed his plans. To envelop the original indulgence of Yuki and the others. Even based on the information obtained from Demon Lord Clayman alone, it was possible to judge Yuki that they had undoubtedly betrayed. Beat Yuki and the others. Confirm their attempts and then adjust the final plan. The assembled hybrid army is estimated at 60,000. Produce wizards in quantity by making them living sacrifices. When the time comes, the marshal will come out and put on a show to attract the attention of Guy and others. Gather the troublemakers together and smash them down in one breath. For this, the battle strength needs to be focused to a point. One of the benefits of the action is that the enemy can be misled into thinking that the imperial capital is unprepared. There are bound to be assailants, and no doubt elite ones. The empire then crushed it with maximum force. Most importantly, it can be assumed that at this time, the war power of the Jura Tempest Federation will also be thin, and the marshal, with the maximum war power to launch a challenge. When Guy's eyes are drawn elsewhere, he'll take the strongest pawn, the storm dragon, into his bag. The above is the full picture of the plan. Hey hey, wait a minute. There are several marshals in the plan. Velgrind is on more than one scene at the same time. Right. It was strange just now, now that the battlefield in the eastern metropolis of the Dwarven Realm, Velgrind should also be making a scene. So, what exactly is this guy in front of me? The, in the power of inquisitive abilities, an existence can create the ability to be one with itself. That's, parallel existence. Wow, you know that. That's smart. According to the King of Wisdom, parallel existence, seems a terrible power. The, parallel existence, displayed by Velgrind can completely split the consciousness. Think of it this way, multiple ontologies existing simultaneously. That is to say, what is in front of us now is the other body, and even if it is defeated, as long as there is still an other body left, that other body can become the main body. Honestly, I don't know what it would take to beat it. Although I am not a Testarossa, I am now becoming tempted to assert that victory is impossible, and that there is nothing that can be done. 